Holy, wonderful, and kind, you are holy, so holy. You are holy, holy, wonderful, and kind. There is no one like you. Robert Boade. I am from Gurumi, Edo State, Nigeria, and I have been a pastor for about 48 years under the Assemblies of God Nigeria, and I have headed theological schools in Nigeria. In that 20, 48 years, I've had a school for about 26 years in uh, four different theological schools. This is the first time, no, the second time I'm heading this theological seminary. I first of all was the head in 1991 to 1993. And now back again to uh, head the same theological seminary from 2017 to date. Uh, I have been married for to this my beautiful wife, Reverend Mrs. Ruth Tebwade, for about 41 years. And God has blessed us with uh, two males and two females. The four children are doing very well and are Christians uh, today and uh, happily married as well. And uh, I want to say one of them is even a pastor uh, like me. And so I'm handing over the baton to someone to who will carry it. So my background has been uh, the first son in my family, and through the grace of God, we've been able to affect our brothers and sisters also to be Christians. And we have uh, Pastor Felix, one of my younger brothers, who is the senior pastor of Christ Embassy Abazo. And so, uh, God has helped us uh, to bring Christianity to the light, uh, of light to the family, and by the grace of God, this is our journey so far. And uh, talking about uh, challenges, well, it is not easy to have uh, Many start for 48 years without challenges. It has been taught us if you are a leader, you must have some challenges. Uh, even as you go from one school to the other, the beautiful thing is that we learn from challenges that we undergo. Sometimes you may not want to move from a a station, one station to another, you feel comfortable, but the authority will tell you go. And when you get there, you face new people, you learn more people, you get adjusted, you are misunderstood, and later understood. So it has been what? Very educative uh, to be there. I also I uh, had a challenge when I had to leave my wife to go to America to go and study for two years without a wife. And she was in Nigeria and I was in America. It was a big challenge, but by the grace of God, I returned and, and we continued the ministry. And so I had to leave school at a time to be a district superintendent, it was another challenge. 
in the ministry. And uh, so, my friends, uh, life is full of challenges. We do not need to go into enumerating all the challenges, but the beauty is that each challenge that comes is a stepping stone towards uh, uh, growing higher and higher. It's okay what lies uh, ahead. Having been uh, trained as a, as a minister of the gospel, I combined seminary training with uh, secular training and uh, even up to PhD from University of Ibado. Uh, I have my specializations in the New Testament and in Greek studies. So the, uh, the future is still bright. Even I will retire from office, but I will not retire from the ministry. Sometimes I will be holding seminars and I may be adjunct lecturers in some other nearby theological and the other institutions that may uh, need our services. And also, we are trying to raise a younger generation. We want to build a nursery primary uh, school uh, whereby we inculcate certain Christian morals on the younger generation, whereby they will socialize them into Christian principles, national principles, and uh, otherwise. So by doing that, we will be affected. We shall also organize seminars in music, seminars for pastors on counseling relationship. So I will be praying for good health. Uh, my wife is a specialist in counseling uh, and also in music. And so she will continue to train the choristers all over uh, Edo State there and beyond. She had participated, in, even January now, while we are retired, the National Church has said, please, all those pastors all over the country that will be ordained, come and teach them about music before the ordination. So we will be praying for long life and good health to still continue. You retire from office, not really from the work as God gives us a uh, good uh, uh, It's okay. And uh, our advice to the younger, what, uh, generation of pastors is that uh, whenever you hear somebody is retiring, somebody thinks it's a bed of roses. No, it is not so. We learn to trust God on daily basis. God has been faithful to me, he will be faithful to the younger pastor. We never knew we could have anything. We never even knew we could become anything. But God's faithfulness that took us here will also guide the younger generation. And uh, uh, to my what? Uh, younger ones, as I said in the chapel, Elijah must go. Elisha must take over. The same anointing that rested upon Elisha, Elijah, even greater anointing was on Elisha and greater miracle. I expect the younger generation not to let down the flag of good Christianity. 61 years uh, of this year of age. For those number of years, Say if I remove, but do you look like somebody else? <laughs> what if has I, been the secret? So, if I say I remove about uh, 12 years or so, let me even say about 10 years out of the 61, you will also see that I have been in the Lord for this number of years because I was born into uh, the church because my mother was already a Christian in good standing and she brought us up well. What am I trying to say? There are people actually who uh, have problems because of the challenges in the ministry as wives to ministers. 
but I have found out that what I was as a Christian was what I carried on into my husband's home. You don't get to uh, the home where you are going into, maybe as a pastor's wife, right? before you start to learn how to trust in God, before you start to learn how to be content with what you have, before you start to learn all those Christian principles. So my challenge to, I mean, sorry, my advice to the younger ones is, if you want to do well in God, start now to dwell in Him. Believe in Him. Allow yourself to be uh, fully engrossed in God. Allow Him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Have all the gifts of the Holy Spirit by asking God to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that is where wisdom will increase in you, knowledge will increase in you, discretion will increase in you. And when all these things are right inside of you, any challenge you face in life, there would always be God being there side by side with you to help you face all the challenges. There are people who face challenges by complaining. But my husband and I have, over the years, faced our challenges in God and with God, not having time to complain. We don't complain about leaders. We don't blame leaders for anything. Transfers come, and you don't plan for the transfer. While you are being comfortable somewhere, they say, ah, transfer, bam, it comes like that. And these are things that tear people apart. Either the man is willing to go and the wife is dragging the man backward, uh, or the children are not in support. But God has so much helped us that when my husband brings out a letter, he will say, ah, transfer. And with the initial shock, he's there. But what's the next thing? Hmm. What has God to say about this? God could be in doing something, even though it is not pleasurable. But we have always learned to see God in every of our movements. And God has also been faithful. Like as we came in here, it was not all so easy when we moved and we were coming this way. We found so many things to put in order and all that and all that. When we came, we raised a list of things that we wanted God to do for us. God, there, we don't, there is nothing like this, like this, like this, like even the degree block. There was no block for degree, but the school has been upgraded to a degree awarding institution. They were only having the uh, block for the diploma. All those things we told God to do for us, God has taken care of all of them. And there's also a secret we have. Any place we find ourselves, we raise prayer partners who join us in prayer. And as we keep doing this, God has been faithful. And when we look back, we always see a reason to praise Him. There has never been any move either by transfer or however to the ministry, changing from one location to another that we have ever regretted. This is a praise to God. While some people find themselves complaining, oh, I am here, and God, we always see ourselves looking back and say, could this be the reason why God sent us here? And this scripture, which is in Romans 8.28, we believe it so much. I believe it as a spinster before I got married. I married my husband and I found that he also believed that very statement in the scriptures that says, all things work together for good unto them that love the Lord, especially unto them that are called after his purpose. So I believe in my life till I die that I am raised for a purpose. I am born into this world for a purpose. God has laid hand on me and made me to be receptive to the word of God for a purpose. And if uh, I am raised for a purpose, my husband is raised for a purpose, we see ourselves knitting our hearts together that no matter the challenge, the first thing we look at is what could God be saying? And immediately we give God that respect of saying, God, what are you saying concerning this challenge? 
and he comes down and miracles start to take place and that is why people see us always transforming anywhere we find ourselves it is the grace of god it is the power of god it is our dependency on god and what again the fearing of god the fear of god we we, we fear god and uh, we don't want just to look at how man will see but am i right with god am i doing it the way god wants it and the, the, the more we we uh, follow these principles we have seen it beautiful exciting and good uh, this is my advice to the young guys what are those who say they don't want to marry pastor and how did i get to marry? Uh, i have uh, a, a quickly a, testimony of someone, a lady who was working in one of our schools, I looked at her, I said, sister, I'm waiting for your um, card. Have you not uh, brought card for any new engagement? She said, well, there are people coming. Uh, all those who have come, they are pastors, and I don't want to marry pastors. That was where I entered into counseling, as my husband said. Uh, then I started counseling, I said, wow, okay. Oh, why don't you want to marry a pastor? And then she told me and said, uh, well, her major reason is that she does not want to be a poor lady uh, after marriage. That she wants to be able to take care of her parents. Her parents have suffered much. And she doesn't want to be the husband just to be counting small, small money. She's not able to take care of her parents. I said, okay, let me tell you now how to pray. Don't be telling God, I don't want to marry this. You will only pray, God, I don't want to marry an unbeliever. Somebody who will be deceitful. So you tell God, Father, give me a husband. May I know that person that you want me to marry. If uh, what I ask of you, Lord, is that after my marriage, I want to be able to take care of my uh, parents with my own husband. Who that person is, is not your problem. If that man turns out to be a pastor, God will design that pastor and make him to be able to join hands with you to take care of your parents. God can raise you, even yourself as a lady, and give a good skill in your hand, a profession in your hand. And when you join it also with your husband, you'll be able to take care of your parents. And you know, beautifully, that lady is doing very well now in... Um, Delta State. It wasn't too long. One man who spoke to her several times before and she said no. As she bent her head and she was almost weeping that day, I prayed for her. She went home. She came back smiling and said, two weeks later after that counseling, that very man, one of them, who had been talking with her and she now said, okay, called again. And immediately that man called and said, I have come to find out whether you are convinced, but if you are not convinced, then I go and look for somebody else. That was how the lady burst into tears and now got married to that man. And they are doing powerfully well, able to take care of her parents and doing more than what they had ever thought. So it is not the issue of the name pastor. It is the issue of who that pastor is, the inner being of the man. And that is why I love my husband now and ever. That I found in him a man that is not deceitful, a man that loves the Lord, a man that fears God, a man that respects the Holy Spirit. And he's a pneumatologist. He talks much and much about the Holy Spirit. And that is also how I am. When uh, before you mm. came to my house, mm. you were a grade two teacher. Thank you. You were a grade two teacher. And uh, you came to my house. From my house, you, you had your NCD, BED, and MED from my house. And even went along uh -huh. at the train they gave the Bible school. The Bible school till I became a uh, so at first you thought I was uh, they thought I would not have money to take care of us, okay. But since you came to my house, have you received more salary than myself? And God has been faithful in that. Never. 
and also did it that uh, he, you mean you can get the small, 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 small. When she is growing, she was in the secular school for 22 years. Uh huh. If not 23, sir. So, what, even while she was there, was in the church. God kept doing it so that the shame they were thinking a pastor cannot take care. And I took care of her, even she did. She has not been able to earn more than myself. So that is a way of saying, take all those years away. God knows how to take care. Be faithful to God and He will take care of you. And may I quickly add this? Uh, before I came to the as I was convinced to marry my husband, there was a challenge that came into my heart. As a great teacher, already as a young girl teaching in government school, the challenge was, huh, they say pastors don't earn much money, that uh, they live by the care of God and by the care of other people as God lay hands on other people to take care of them. They don't have specific salary scale, or they don't have a scale of salary. Then immediately that came into my spirit, as I was the type who always consult God and talk with God you know, regularly. I just went into prayers and said, God, I said it to God. I said, oh, God, this is my challenge now. And the Holy Spirit returned an answer quickly to me and said, look at the colleagues with, with whom you are teaching in that primary school. Only two of you are females in that school. All others are males. With the same salary you are earning that was very small that time. How much was it? 120 naira. Uh -huh. 129 naira. With that amount of money, those who are males are using that money to take care of their wives that have no job for any, any anything, any reason. So for you are earning something. Then immediately I got the the mini of what the Lord was telling me. It was an I said, oh, okay, which means when I get to that home, my 129 naira, I will submit it to my husband, and then with the little thing he has, I didn't even think he will earn as much, with the little thing he has, we will join it together. We'll be able to take care of our family. This was the job we did and enter into his home. And I knew that God saw that satisfaction. That I wasn't bothered about how much was he earning? And so, so, so. And immediately I entered into that room and I made this statement to my husband. When he earned his salary, his salary was 200 naira. No, 150 at that time. Okay, 150. All right. Higher than your own. Okay, mine was 129 naira and his own was uh, what? 150 naira. As I had the mind that I would submit my money, himself also had the mind of submitting even his money also to the wife and said, see my the money that I have received this month. As I looked at it, I said, oh, so you people can receive money like this? So from the beginning, I didn't overestimate my husband. I, I went in with, with what? Uh, not, not having an over expectation, and those are the things that crumble young ladies when they enter into the husband's home, whether the person is a pastor or not. When you oversize your husband, you'll be having problems, you can never be satisfied. So, right from then, till God kept on increasing our salaries and so on, even both in the secular and then in the, in the seminary, as he kept on improving the salaries and so on. Whatever salary we find ourselves, we find ourselves satisfied. Yes. I've never told my husband, ah, why must it be like this? You are a prof. Is this what a prof should end? No, it doesn't come from us. And no wonder. When we even had the challenge of a cast, we came to this very place where we are winding up today in a, a quiet from state. We were rather praying, God, give us a strong car. We meant that they have no car. He did his best to repair that vehicle. It didn't work out. But what did God do with all our satisfaction, not minding? He raised his own brother 
who did not even know what we were passing through because we don't complain to anybody. We only speak to God. Just called on him and said, uh, I have a car for you, daddy. Uh, come and pick a car. By joke, by joke, he sent a very strong, powerful car to him. And that is the car God gave us now to use for these three years that we find ourselves in a place respecting God, obeying God, to do the work he wants us to do. Not just a car, a Jeep. Yeah, a Lexus Jeep. A, a, a place where we are doing a, a, a work for the Lord in our writing. So God be the glory in all things uh, thus far. And we know He will keep on helping us. Uh, why did happen. I even know my brother? <laughs> Where did he even know in that those days? <laughs> it is here. <laughs> you see that this is God's uh, arrangement. And so we are happy. See how nicely he has even uh, contributed uh, to the chapel service, to everything. They think that this is London uh, made. <laughs> no. Thank you very much. Thank you, you sir. Have okay. Thank Can you. I read this to you? If you find it useful, you can pick it. People have asked me over the years, Reverend Pastor, this is good to you, we keep looking at you and your husband. What's the secret of your success? We have said it in China, in, um, in a brief explanation. There was something I now put up as people kept asking me this question. And that was when I celebrated my 50th birthday. The secret of my success. One, I hold my salvation sacred. I don't play with it. I hold firm the privilege of being a child of God. I have the fear of God and I don't play with anything that will offend God. I have sincere love for God. I always believe in, in God I live, I move, and I have my being, as in Acts chapter 17, verse 28. I believe in not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And I believe in never by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. My husband and I, we are always mindful of his will on daily basis. I love God and I enjoy his will. Whether that will is sweet or on a, um, a rugged road, I enjoy and I love his will. Always believing and watching for God's will which makes all things work together for my good. I believe in the Paracletus factor, the Holy Spirit walking side by side with me. Being conscious in his person, never wanting to grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, 8. I'm conscious of pleasing him every day. And I have a daily consciousness of seeing God and being with him forever. Even now, as we are doing an interview, I'm conscious. He could even come now. I'm conscious of seeing him even on a daily basis. These are the things. These are the things that have kept me over the years. My slogan, when loaded with much of responsibilities, even with me and my husband, is, Oh God, face all the challenges that face us today, even in new stations. At the end, we get surprised that God has perfectly and beautifully attended to all those challenges that face us. Jesus, we believe, he prays for us even when we cannot pray.